Everything's gone correctly, then we are A, live, and B, you can hear us. Thank you from wherever you are for joining us live here in London at our HQ. And we've got a jam packed 90 minutes today. We've been asking you guys for the world's greatest hack, cooking You're hack. Doing such a great Anton Deck impression. <laughs> Why? I love I have, it. You've I gone. Have, you've, you've gone. Oh, I'm in the jungle. Here we go. Yeah, have, you've have, gone have, straight have, into TV presenter mode. I've been watching a lot of it, and they are so good, aren't they? <laughs> they are go on. You've got the biggest forehead. Go on, Anne. Welcome to the world's greatest internet cooking hack. We are on the search for the greatest hack because it's Hack Friday. Scrap this Black yeah. Friday stuff. We don't care about that. We care about it a little, little bit, bit. But we'll, come on to that. we'll come on to that in a minute. <laughs> but we don't care about that stuff. We want to find a place. We want to give you a place where you can get away from all of that Black Friday messaging. And let's just have some fun. Let's find something useful out of this that you don't just get for one day. No. Nope. You can take this forward for your whole life. This could be life changing. So, over the last week, we've been asking you guys for your best cooking hats. And you commented in your hundreds, thousands, thousands, lots and lots. And we did our best to sift through all of them, take the most popular ones, and pop them on this tournament style board. This is so professional that Mike and Izzy <laughs> definitely weren't doing this three minutes ago. No. 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 <laughs> So, we've narrowed it down to the top eight most popular cooking hacks. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to put them up against each other. And uh, these two will go up against each other. Then these two will go up against each other. We will find a winner from each. And then, depending on how much time we have in this 90 minute live stream, they will either go up against each other again or we'll just find four finalists and you will decide what the greatest cooking hack is. Now, I know what you're thinking. Are these two mugs cooking everything? No, don't worry. We have... Shabbos, Shabbos in the kitchen. Shabbos, Shabbos. So yeah, um, essentially we've got eight hacks to demo. Some of them will have the with hack and without without hack to kind of make a comparison. Otherwise, we'll just put them to the test. And each time we've demoed them, you guys can choose which one goes forward. So lots of food, lots of prep, lots of mouths to feed here in the studio. Uh, simple as that. Where are we starting with hack number one and two? Well, first, first, I just want to say we've got quite a lot here to go through. And I, you know, one of my favourite things about tournaments is when you do um, the, I don't, when you gamble. The, the, in, the wow. in, the, in the office, we go pick out of a hat yes. who you're backing. Oh yeah, which one are you backing? So, let's, a sweepstake, that's the word, sweepstake. Right. So, so, coming up first, we have one tray cooks, cooking everything on one tray. Is it a hack? Ooh. It is, I it think is it's a hack. A hack. A good hack. We're gonna put that up against spatchcocks. Spatchcock chicken. Oh yeah, yeah. spatchcock chicken. Yeah. That yeah. deserves a full top, we just couldn't fit it on here. Then, then we've got scissors. <laughs> The, the, the inc no, underused in the kitchen. Scissors against the bench scraper, a very chefy tool. It is. Then, what use? then we're going to head over to what sounds like a basketball team, the Bicarb Magics. <laughs> we're the, using Bicarb in other places in the kitchen, in cooking, than you would generally think, versus microwave mashed potatoes. Okay, right. And th well, then the final competition here is going to be between ice cube tray flavour bombs flavours you put in ice cubes, versus a hand mixer chicken. Now, I, I know for a fact that Mike ha has been pushing for the hand mixer chicken one for a long, one. long time. One. Right, so sweepstakes. Who do you think your winner is now? Have, have, have a little think. Pick, pick one and see if it makes it to the final. Comment down below. I've got mine. You got yours. Well, mine, not Are you going to you. reveal? You're not going to reveal it. No, 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 no. No, no you can't. That would be biased. Be biased. This is the fine. internet's favourite, not yours. Fine. All right. Okay. All right. Fine. I'll okay. keep mine to myself then. Okay. So, round one. <laughs> one tray cooks versus spatchcock chicken. Evers. So, in both examples, we're talking about cooking stuff. Both of them are kind of speeding things up or simplifying. Uh, so, we're going to start with a chicken and I'm gonna show you how to spatchcock it because your suggestion was that by spatchcocking it, you can cook it quicker, you can basically open it up, lay it out and get a more even cook. All of those things are correct. It's very simple, on a bird like this, you've got breasts, you've got legs, you've got wings. On the back of the chicken, you've got a spine. That's the bit you need to cut out. The bit that starts at the bottom of that. So, a couple of ways you can do it. A sharp pair of kitchen scissors is a good one. You're just gonna go in and cut either side of the spine. And it sounds a little bit 
nasty, because you are cutting through a few bones, which is why kitchen scissors are good. But that's what you end up with, one side of it, and then you go the other side of it, and you cut the same. Now by doing this, we've got an oven preheated, by the way. You can lay it flat, and once you've taken that out, which is the, the, the spine of the chicken, we don't need that, although you can save it for gravies and things if you're doing that, this whole chicken now opens up and lays flat in a roasting tray. Now if it's laying flat, it cooks more evenly. It also means we've now got more surface area to add flavour and we've got more skin exposed evenly that isn't going to steam underneath the chicken so it all goes more crispy. So if the chicken, crispy chicken skin is your favourite, you've now got more of it because it's nice and even and open. Quick wash the hands and I'll show you what flavours we're going with. This is a very simple uh, combination of uh, a certain musician's spicy uh, chilli sauce with a whole bunch of other seasonings, salt, pepper, uh, some smoked paprika, some cumin and some coriander into a paste. It's got the salt in there as well. I'm going to slap it onto the chicken. I'm going to place the limes, which I've quartered, around the chicken and it's going to go into the oven for just 30 minutes. So by opening up, you're cooking an entire chicken at 200 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Super speedy. What's everyone saying, guys? Well, straight away, there are lots of people just shouting out who they think are going to win, and it's interesting, some, some bold choices, um, but also people are asking about how we're going to vote. Um, at the end of each section, each competition, we'll be opening up a poll for you guys to vote on who you think is the best, or which one is the best hack. Um, and I think, it's, I think it's going to be tight. There's a lot of different messages out there. Um, does Ebers like his new name, Shebers? Shebbers! Not a huge fan of Shebbers, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I still get used to Ebers because my name's Ben. <laughs> Simple as that. But Mike said it once and it's stuck, so there we go. Shebbers! Spatchcock chicken going in for 30 minutes, nice hot preheated oven, and the comparison is a whole chicken that we're not going to spatchcock. So all we're going to do to it is season it up nicely so that we can see a nice bit of crispy skin, but you're going to see the difference in how much of that crispy skin you get if you don't flatten it out. And this will take 40 minutes. So, only 10 minutes longer, plus resting. But, that's because it's at room temperature, and whilst 10 minutes doesn't sound like a huge difference, it is 30% or a third more uh, than the spatchcock version. This is sitting on top of root vegetables, onions and cabbage. I'm going to splash some water in and put it in a different oven at the same temperature for 40 minutes. What you will notice is it's bigger. So if you ever run out of space in your oven by roasting a whole chicken and there's not enough space to get other trays in, spatchcock it and you'll get more trays in your oven. Another easy hack. What are you thinking, Baz? Uh, so a comment from Shigeru Miyamoto Ghost says, it's a good question. Would spatchcocking a turkey work for Thanksgiving or Christmas? You might need garden shears, but yep. Yeah, okay, that's a Well, big... that comes into the scissoring one, later, <laughs> yeah. it, actually. It's called just scissoring, is that the right? Cool, great. It's just <laughs> also, big that's, paper scissors. That is some prep that is 364 days in advance. What do you well, mean? Thanksgiving was yesterday. Yeah, no. Actually, no, next year's a leap year. Oh, okay. 360, <laughs> 365 <laughs> days in advance. That is, that is some great going. Um, <laughs> uh, I also saw one. How does Ben get his hair so perfect? He's, he's called <laughs> Shebbers now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's a very big piece of Lego and so he puts it on every morning <laughs> he chooses which one he wants he's gone for the longer one today yeah. the longer greyer one today. sometimes some, sometimes <laughs> sometimes it's really funny because he puts it on back to front that is a bit weird yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I get really hot and sweaty sometimes this bit comes down and Whoa! Whoa! Really terrible um, I tell you what if it ain't broke don't fix it it's been the same for 25 years it's fine uh, Shepherds, a uh, couple more questions uh, number one, uh, would you put butter under the skin of the chicken? Oh, you absolutely can. So you can basically, with like, basically your fingers are the best tool, is you can ease the skin away from the flesh and you end up with a, a pocket underneath you can rub butter into. Is it required? I'm not convinced it is. Chicken skin is already fatty and if you've got it laid out and exposed where it's not going to steam too much but it's going to roast, it will do that job for you. You kind of don't need to, but it's an extra step you can do if you like. Uh, there's also uh, another question which I think might become more relevant the later we go on. People have already noticed that you're running back and forth from the other kitchen <laughs> and they're asking where Cush is. Sillily, really sillily, someone let Cush take a holiday. I know. Yeah. 
So Who signed that Because she's on the other side of the world. I've been left in charge of the kitchen, which is why we put it this side, so I can seamlessly sneak out and you'll never see, but evidently you already have seen. So there we go. Don't blame Izzy. Um, <coughs> Eliza, so we have the whole team here today. Um, Eliza, could we have um, our first poll? Um, is that, would you mind setting one up? Ooh. Um, it's not anything to do with what Ben's no, cooking can I now. Uh, it's quite I'll, time okay, I'll, I'll tell Eliza about the poll and we'll come back in a second. You, you carry on. So number two, the hack we're putting up against Spatchcock is one tray bakes. And you guys said, there were a few of you saying, or sheet pan bakes, that it's an easy way of midweek cooking and getting loads of stuff in to cook at the same time, at the same temperature. You don't have to watch over it, it just gets done. As a result, this is one we're gonna demonstrate. We do quite a few of these on Sidekick. It's great for midweek cooking. A bag of uh, rice, pre-cooked, that just needs to be microwaved. We're not gonna microwave it. One tin of black beans, already drained. One tin of tomatoes, obviously not drained. Some chorizo, Jamie's favourite. Beautiful flavour bomb because it's already seasoned with all of that porky fat, smoked paprika and garlic. And then salt, sugar, cumin and a bit more smoked paprika. That goes in. All you need to do is mix it all up so it's equally combined and lay corn on the cob on top and the whole tray goes into the oven for 15 minutes. It's a one tray bake, it comes out delicious. When it comes out, we add cheese, parsley, and lime. The poll is up. You asked for it. People, people get confused. You have too many names, so we have to narrow it down to which one. Right, so the We've, poll is... The poll is now, is his name officially <laughs> Shebbers, Eggers, which was a recent thing that you brought in, uh, Ebbers, or Ben? I mean, Please. I'm very happy with Ben, right and so was my mother. <laughs> No, she wasn't. She called you Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> Only when I've been a very naughty boy. <laughs> so please, <laughs> vote now. I'm, I'm, I'm making my vote. So. <laughs> Are you voting from you or from sort From me, from right, me. Right, from fine. me. Okay. Yeah, we're sort of locking in. <laughs> I get it. Oh, mate, these are, this is fifth. 500 votes already in. <laughs> this is serious <laughs> stuff, everybody. How many people we got on the, on the live stream? 2,200. Uh, Excellent. Wow. 2,241. Excellent. Have we, done a, have we done a question about where are you joining us, Ben? Once, no. you, once we've all rechristened Ben, why don't we... Uh, <laughs> and he will change it by deed poll because this will be a legally binding poll now. Right? <laughs> Definitely. Yes, yeah, it's works. a legally yeah. binding yeah. poll, much like yeah, the world's the greatest cooking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, comment down below, let us know, where are you joining us from? We are in East London. Right, Edmunds, what are you doing now? That is our one tray bake that's going to go in with the spatchcock for 15 minutes and both should be about ready together-ish. Uh, because once the tray bake comes out, we're going to crumble over feta, some ripped up parsley, we're going to quarter a lime and just serve that on the side for people to squeeze. And that is a one tray. It literally takes three or four minutes to throw on a tray and mix uh, and then get in an oven, job done, midweek cooking at its best. When it comes to voting, I'm going to come back to vote on these two once they're ready so we can look at the comparison of spatchcock versus normal roast and tray bake wonders. Bear in mind, this is just one example of a tray bake and Sidekick has got loads. We've done loads on the channel, grocery shop challenge, absorption methods with like orzo pasta and rice. We've done roasts with tofu. We've done roast with chicken thighs, root vegetables. It's an endless opportunity. So you're not voting for this recipe on this tray in this oven today. The concept of tray bakes. Yeah, is we, it also true that there are other, we, there's other spatchcockings to do, isn't there? You don't just have to spatchcock a chicken. You can spatchcock any bird that has a similar anatomy, including a turkey, if you've got a tray big enough once you've flapped it out and a <laughs> pair of scissors big enough. Sure. Um, also, I've got to point out, because like, we're sitting under this sign here, um, the options for tray bakes on Psychic are yes. phenomenal. I, I think I've cooked nearly all of them now. They're my favourite thing to cook at home, tray bakes, I think. And would you say now would be a really good time if you haven't tried Psychic? Would, would now be... This is where the Black Friday bit comes in. No plugs! No plugs! No. <laughs> would you say that now would be a good time to try Psychic? Well, it wouldn't be the worst time, would it? Because I think, I think there is some sort of deal on at the moment. Would There's it be the Black Friday deal that makes it... 50% off. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Is, is it Friday today? It is Friday, yeah. Oh my, you might be right. Yeah, so I do think you can get it for 50% off for the whole year, which makes it £24.99. If only there was a URL link in the description box to take you to that. Wow, do, do you know what? There might just be. Is there? Yeah. Is there? Wait, did I put one there? <laughs> if I did, head to the App Store, 
your favourite <laughs> app store, uh, or head to sortedfood.com and you'll find that there. Lovely, lovely bit of plug in. Well done. I didn't even mention it. That, that was great. Yeah, that was great. Um, right, let's look at the most important bit the polls. Oh, yes. Do we have a winner, Eliza? Ebbers, 38%. 38%? 38%. You are the original Ebbers. The Ebbers, which still isn't my name, is the one we're sticking with. <laughs> so glad to hear it. How, Thanks how, for your votes. How close were Shebbers? Oh, 34. That means we could just leave one extra letter in. So you could be Hebbers. Hebbers. <laughs> <laughs> right, should we now move on to what we're here for? We need to vote whether or not it's going to be the one tray cooks or spatchcock. But no, because no, well you weren't listening. <laughs> They've got to cook in the oven. When they come out, we'll be able to test them and see how they are. Yeah, I mean and at that, that point, we, we will then put, yeah, we spoke the about this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But don't worry. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I was too busy with Shebbers and Ebbers. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Tell you what, Ben, what I would really like to do is find out whether scissoring or scraping is best. Allow me, Jamie. <laughs> so, there were lots of suggestions for using scissors in the kitchen as a hack. Now, not just like it's a useful bit of kit, you should have them, but specific uses where scissors are easier uh, at home to prep certain things. Uh, comment down below if you use scissors a lot at home. Some scissors are sort of multifunctional, like this one's got a, a bottle opener on it and a nut cracker on it, but we are literally just talking basic scissors here to do simple tasks. For example, some of the ones you guys suggested that we will demonstrate, chives. They're already stuck together with a rubber band. Rather than cutting them and having to go to the effort, if you're not already got one out, of a board and a knife, actually, just snippy snip, lots of control, take your time. We've all been cutting with scissors and paper for our lives, whereas you might be less comfortable with a... Uh, did I say that around the right way? We've all been cutting with scissors all our lives. You might be less comfortable with a knife and a chopping board. So there we go, a very, very easy way, an easy thing to wash up option. Yeah, we had lots of people suggesting this. Dalmatian uh, SEN, use scissors to cut food. Uh, we had Susan Smith saying using scissors for cutting herbs. Pizza, even sausages and meat. Uh, revive cooking, scissors, especially for pizza. Yeah. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Sorry, uh, just another fantastic name for Ebbers. The man who loves his herbs so much, he should be called Hebbers. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're getting distracted first. <laughs> What I've made is a chive and garlic mayonnaise for later on. But another suggestion with the scissors, um, we've already spatchcocked with them, but you guys said, I think Jamie just mentioned, beans. Um, so beans are really fiddly and annoying um, because you need to top and tail them all. You can do it individually just by pinching it out with your fingers. Alternatively, is scissors a good hack for green beans in the kitchen as opposed to the alternative? If you do do it, make sure to tap down so they all line up before you snip. There's a few people here of your kind. I know, I've just seen Steven Tyler. Yeah. I didn't know that Steven Tyler was left-handed. No, but now we do. Now we do. So Steven Tyler is left-handed, and he says that actually he's more comfortable using a knife because most scissors are rightist. Leftist. I don't know. Leftist. Leftist. They're against, against the, the left. Against, against the left. Yes, they're, they're leftist. Right they're yeah, right, they're, they're right, they're right wing scissors. <laughs> uh, most, yeah, a lot of, a lot of scissors yeah, are yeah. hard to use yeah. for um, the best people in the world. Okay. So I think that is an option, using scissors. I guess my question when we come to the vote, and I'm just going to put my two pence in here. Evers, don't sway the vote. As a chef, is it just easier to use a knife and a board to do those same tasks? If you already have a board out and you're doing other things, it's unlikely you're only going to be chopping chives. Is that any more difficult or is it actually much the same? I don't know as a hack. However, somebody did mention pizza. And actually, um, yeah. pizza, different side of the world, but South Korean cooking. Absolutely. Lots yeah. of scissors being in, lots of people commenting that as well. Especially the cooked meat. Bacon was another top suggestion. It's actually easier to cut bacon with scissors or rashers if you want to snip that up. Um, and cooked barbecue. We have a video coming out soon where we went to an amazing street food market in California and they did squid on a stick. And um, the squid on a stick, um, they would cut the squid with scissors. So lots and lots of use for scissors. I should stress, if one of those uses <laughs> is cutting the backbone out of a chicken, then um, make sure you wash them before you use them for other things, uh, which I did. That is, what are you chuckling at? <laughs> There's so many conversations happening behind the camera here. Um, uh, what did they do on a stick? Huh? What did they do on a stick? 
Weird. Right, fine, okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, my, my issue with scissors is I only have one pair of scissors for the entire household, so the, same, the scissors that I, no, I use can't. to cut tape. Yeah. And I use the same for no, that I, as I do, yeah. I had to buy like a four pack of scissors because A, they kept getting lost. Yeah. And um, hopefully not in the kids' yeah. bedrooms or something. Like, yeah. and, and B, um, because yeah, you need some for actual kitchen use and then you need some for wrapping presents. Yeah, I have, I have been known to like panic and go, I need to cut this sausage in bits and I'm sitting there with uh, Austin's little kitty scissors. Oh, yeah, but then you get the nice shape, the nice shape, yeah, 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 Sorry. Sorry. Sausages is, is another good <laughs> Sausages is another good use for scissors. That is one of the options in this round. Uh, the other one is bench scrapers. Um, a lot of you are saying bench scrapers for a lot of different things. Um, like we have lots of scissors in the studio, we have lots of different bench scrapers that we use for lots of different things. One of those things is actually, as you all suggested, just clearing the board easier. So when you've chopped your herbs, you can just scoop up to one place and move to one side. So really easy for clearing a board. One good use. The second is for portioning, cutting, scraping dough. So what I've got here is a nice dough that has been proving uh, for a nice amount of time and now it's good to roll out. So dusting a flour and I think it's quite a enriched dough. So it might be a little on the sticky front and therefore we might end up with more mess on the board to work with because we use them quite a lot with soft doughs. So for portioning soft doughs, you use it almost like a second hand rather than a knife on a board. So you've got a bit more control over what you're doing because it cuts nice through lots of things, but pastry, bread, dough, one of those good examples. Then at the end, once you've rolled them out, really easy to clear a board down and to get what was a messy board tidied up. It becomes a second hand. For me, instead of tongs, for grippy, a scraper is really, really useful in the kitchen. However, whilst I shake these into balls, what does everyone else think? Well, it's tricky, isn't it? Yeah, it is tricky. There's a few comments from people saying, but Ben, couldn't you just use, sorry, Ebers? Right, nomenclature. Yeah, sure. Could you not just use a knife to do all of that that you just mentioned? In the same way that you were gonna use a knife for your scissors, you could use a knife for your bench scraper? Yes, and I often do if I'm chopping. So if I've just chopped a whole bunch of stuff, I will scrape with the side of the knife on. The only difference is you're only working with a couple of inches. If you want a few more inches, then the bench scraper is gonna be better because you can really get underneath it and get what you have into your pot or if it's peelings into the garbage or whatever. He loves, loves chopping. He does he loves chopping. chopping and he loves a couple it, more inches. If, it always felt a little bit excessive to have a scraper. Like it was only, it's only the chefs who've came, come to like work with us here who all have a scraper, you're like, it's yeah. a very chef thing, it's over the top. I really want one. And it's like, just moving moving stuff from one place to the other is really handy. Cause like, a knife, yeah, and, that one. and not, no, I want, like I want a, a big scraper. one. The problem with that, well, it's all right. But the, the, um, the problem with a knife is you never quite get everything onto the knife. You've got to do a couple of trips. This, in, but also scrape it straight into the bin as yes. well. Like it's good for clearing down. I, Really but, useful. but for me, this is the bit where, where Evers gets clever because he's got a dough yeah, and he's using the bench scraper yeah. with the dough yeah. and what's the dough going to turn into? I guarantee you, don't guarantee you because I don't know if I'm 100% sure, Gone. pizza. And then what, how's he going to cut the pizza? Yeah. With scissors. Am I yeah. right? Are we doing, in, are we doing hack Jay, inception? Jay, Jay, Jay. Are we doing hackception? Do you want to know what's really funny? We were going to do hack, hack Inception, but when I put the pizza in the oven at the start of this live, I forgot to push go on the oven. <laughs> A running theme, so it's not quite done. <laughs> uh, but I did just scrape all that in. The other thing with the good scrapers, and you can get you know, various different, very, very cheap scrapers, but they're really cool, especially if they're oval, because they can get inside a bowl, so you get scrape out all the edges. But some of the other ones that are particularly fine and sharp also have measurements down the side. So again, if you're doing pastry, you can use that as a measurement to cut as well. So I think lots of uses for a bench scraper. Um, at the moment, we've got ourselves some balls that are going to prove, and then we'll bake them off later on. I think the, um, the Bean Hunter 22 just says, it's just more washing up. That, yeah, but- With I've, scissors and this. I've also seen other people saying that they wouldn't want to use their knife to scrape along 
the chopping board. The danger, danger. Because, well, no, not just danger, danger, but am I blunty blunting it? <laughs> yeah, like, well, are you? A li- little bit, but not much. But I, I, think, I, I think this, you're definitely not blunting this. This, is, this, is, this is, feels like more, I have more control. A knife, you wouldn't do that on a board, would you? No. As well. No, okay. Um, so, are, are we at the point where we can run a vote? So I think we are at our first vote. And remember, this is not which is your favourite kitchen equipment. This is, as a kitchen hack, which one is worthy of your kitchen and now everyone's kitchen. Is it scissors for herbs, sausages, beans and pizza? Or is it dough scraper or bench scraper for clearing, scooping and cutting? There is going to be a poll coming up any second now. Eliza? Yes, yep. she's yes. on it. She's, she's on it. On it. She's uh, there's a poll coming up. So, vote for which one your favourite is. Is your favourite one scissors yep. or bench scraper? The winner of this will go through to the next round. Right, there are, the comments are fascinating. They're filthy as well. And they are. Danger, danger, high voltage and blunty blunty have gone down very well. <laughs> Hashtag blunty blunty. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, people, a lot of people saying scraper all the way. Um, a lot of people are really actually anti-scraper as well. It's, it's splitting the room big time here. Well, this is why we're doing this. This is why this is such an important yep. co- p- bit of consumer research. What will it become? Will, will one of these become the world's greatest cooking hack? And also, lots of love for Eliza. Go, Eliza! Go, Eliza! Come on! <laughs> uh, right, poll is up. Oh, I can't vote, can I? Actually, whilst, whilst we're waiting on yep. the poll, um, Dom is uh, Dom is there. He's got the super close up lens. Can you just say hello to everyone on the team so we can so we it's, can see? Yeah. Yeah, how how, how, how close bit. is it? It's quite Stop. close. Yeah. There we go. Mike's there. Hello, Mike. Well, wave, Mike. Yeah. Izzy. Izzy's there. Yeah. There we go. Right. Head on the end. There we go. <laughs> Ed and Ed's there. <laughs> and Tom. Uh, some 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 of you may uh, recognise the, uh, the the ginger potato on the end. He's from uh, our very first citrus cocktail video. Yeah, 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 he was. Uh, you were the main character, actually. I yeah. Was yeah, yeah, I yeah. Where should be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ebers has left a nice place for you in the kitchen if you want to. <laughs> Stop right. swearing at me. <laughs> we, we have over, well, nearly twelve hundred votes so far. Um, everyone wins. It then comes down to which ones you buy. Because I've just realised by accident, I just but I think we got another one here. That's more ergonomic. <laughs> The Nordic wear one, it's, got, it's a really comfy one to hold for a long time, but it's got two pieces, which one might break, whereas this one's bent out of a single sheet of metal. Which one do you have at home? That one. Yeah. Which one would you pick? Yeah. Which one would I pick? Which one would, which one would I pick? Yeah. Out of these? Well, I don't want to sway the votes, but definitely this. And I don't know whether this is, when it comes to cooking hack voting, I think this might be more foodie chefy. I think this might be a normal home cook. Because I, for me, I think some, this is great, for opening packaging when you can't get into it, right? This is great for lots of things, snipping herbs off the balcony before you wash them and use them in your food. But I don't then use them to snip the herbs. I use them to snip them off the balcony and then I use a knife to cut them. So relatable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Herbert, herbers or whatever you want I'm just giving you the content. Have we closed the poll? Close it. The, the poll is closed. I can't see the response. Neither can I. Oh. 55%. To... Oh no, it's scissors. 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 percent scissors have won the poll. Scissors. Against Ebers. What's that, Ebers? I'm, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Right. Carry on. Scissors moves along into the semis, maybe, or maybe the final. I can't. I can't this I'm is left really fiddly. <laughs> Well, you hold the back. After all that conversation yeah. about scissors being leftist, now the pins are as well, apparently. Right. There we go. Scissors are in. We have our first semi. Finalist. The scissors get moved forward, the bench scrapers are going in the dishwasher. Right. <laughs> Job done. Um, boys, would you like a drink? I can offer you red wine, white wine, or beer. I would Ooh. like a beer, please, Ebers. Beer, please, Ebers. Beer, please, Ebers. What flavour? Beer flavoured, please, Ebers. Uh, a lager. A cider. One of the IPAs. We've got all those. An IPA. Got, a, got an IPA. Got a soft pale ale. Thomas, what did you bring with you? Uh, Guinness. Guinness? There you go, Bass. Okay. <laughs> Three flavours, none of them are lager. Uh, lovely, lovely. Uh, so, but there is some lager in this bridge. Lovely. So, so if you, you are, I'll have all four, thanks. 
That's not useful. No, why not? What are you doing? I was going to hand them out. Oh, right. Well, in that case, Which one do you want? I'll have this one. Thanks. Okay, anybody else for anyone? Michael? <laughs> yes, please. Oh, it's a good thing you're not in that camera shot, isn't it, Baz? Yeah. <laughs> 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 right, so we now have our first winner of the polls. It's Scissors. If you're just joining us, we are finding the world's greatest cooking hack. We've been putting one tray cooks against Spatchcock. They are in the oven. We'll be putting them to the test in a few minutes. We've put Scissors against Bench Scrapers. And you have voted for Scissors to be the winner. Next up, we are looking at the basketball team, Bicarb Magic, versus Microwave Mash, which I think, didn't you go, was that a Halloween costume that you had one year, Microwave Mash? Is that a popular culture reference? I'm not sure I get it. If I say yes, you won't know whether I'm lying or not. Correct. <laughs> Shall I talk about Bicarb? Yes. So, this one, genuinely, half of what we're about to demonstrate is new to us, and we don't know in which direction it's going to go. But a few of you said that bicarb, or bicarbonate of soda, um, is really useful in the kitchen beyond where I've used it previously, which is for cleaning purposes and for a raising agent in um, things like baking where you've already got an acidic ingredient. However, the thing is it changes the pH, so it does some magical things. As a test, I've got two equal amounts of sliced onions. Uh, they've got a dash of oil in both, a pinch of salt in both, and then, I'm going to add a tiny, tiny amount of bicarb to one. So what bicarb does is change the pH. It, it raises the pH, makes it more basic, and as a result, speeds up the browning and breaking down of the enzymes on onion. So in theory, they caramelize quicker. You get more of that Maillard reaction. And in theory, and we're going to test it side by side, you get a quicker stewed or caramelized onion but it only needs a little pinch like that we'll see if it makes any difference i'm going to put both on over here and we'll see what happens i am very excited that we're going into science time i've never heard of this hack no we've well we've had bicarb in potatoes yeah, so i think yeah. that was a, yeah. a poppy yeah uh poppy hack wasn't it um that she did on tiktok was putting bicarb into, into uh, boiling potatoes um, so that they boil at a higher temperature, quicker, which means that you get a uh, fluffier, fluffier outside. outside. Yeah. Well, crispier outside when you roast them and it's still fluffy in the middle. But never in meat. I'm slightly concerned. So the second use is with ground meat. So this is uh, equal weight of ground beef that I've already mixed with onion, garlic, thyme, rosemary and salt. So that is a meatball mixture, it's a burger mixture, it could just be fried off in a pan to give you minced beef. But to one of them, I'm going to add, and I've done this slightly wrong already, uh, I'm going to add one tablespoon of water. And one teaspoon of bicarb. And that will make basically a slurry, a mixture that will help this bicarb to evenly distribute between this meatball mix. Now, what does it do? Well, that's a good question. In theory, when you cook meat, you have proteins that um, do their thing. And this stops them doing their thing. Because if proteins bind too much, they squeeze out lots of moisture and water, and in doing so, uh, they become quite tough and chewy. So in theory, adding this makes a softer, tender meatball or mix. And it's doing the same thing as the onions in the sense that it's um, <laughs> the sense that it is also going to help with the browning. So it should go crispier, browner, and stay more tender. See, the only time I use bicarb in the kitchen is on the rare occasion I'm either baking or cleaning the bottom of a pan. Cleaning the bottom of a pan because you burnt it because you're yeah. a naughty boy. I'm a no I left, I left a hob on. Uh, Auntie Jen puts them on her chicken wings before baking. Ooh. Just a touch and toss with that and seasoning. It reacts with the fat and makes them crispier in the oven. Yeah, so exactly that. It's, good. it's the Maillard reaction. Anything goes brown. So it's anything that... What reaction? Maillard reaction. Maillard, uh, uh, people are just picking up your pronunciation. That's Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to, in the top of my head, I was trying not to get confused with the duck. That's a matter. Yeah. <laughs> so are we saying the bicarb magic is 
everything that bicarb can do. No, yeah, no, 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 no. Just in changing your pH in the kitchen. So use it just for, half, for anything you want the pH changing off. Dodger. Important. Difference. Important. 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 And um, right, I've got, I've got, I've got to say it. So many comments asking for one man who's missing. We've always spoken about Kush. Who else is missing here? Tom. No. Oh, mu big muscles. Hunky man. Are you okay? Hey, remember, James. No, do, you, do you remember that guy James? Remember? The other chef. The other, he was. He was. Oh, he had to go and find himself. <laughs> and then he found himself. In the then, Alps. And then he found himself in the Alps. And then he's coming back to the live show. Yes. He's coming with us to Snow Out. Oh, What's no, the here we go show? again. <laughs> <laughs> What's the live show, Barry? Right, so. <laughs> ladies, in only a couple of weeks' time. Oh, God. Um, the whole team is um, on its way to a, well, it's a place that you've booked. Yeah. Um, it's an inn in the middle of nowhere. It looks, looks good on the internet. It was cheap. Uh, it looks slightly sketchy. We're slightly worried about how things are going to go because the whole thing is called Snow Way Out. Yeah, if you might have seen our Wild Weekender that we did in the summer. It was a full weekend of live streamed mayhem where we bring in um, an external production team. Uh, there's uh, the whole food team. There is all of us. We go all out. And basically. we basically put on all of your favorite video formats from the channel. Uh, into a live setting with all of the added mayhem and chaos that that ensues, plus lots of other fun and uh, surprises that we can't talk about just yet. But of all the things that we've been talking about with you guys online, the one thing that seems to have stirred up the most excitement is the return of James, James Curry. Curry. Well, he's coming back to take part in a chef versus, versus chef, chef versus, versus chef, chef battle, battle. Which has never been done. Which a lot of people have been asking for. He's, oh no, I probably can't tell, oh, no, no. You can't, you can't no. there's, there's no, very no. little yeah. you can say. I mean, yeah, I know. From, it's gonna be great. It is gonna be great. <laughs> uh, you can get tickets if there isn't a link in the description box. There will be one very soon. Go uh, Eliza! <laughs> Probably within the 20 second delay, I would imagine. <laughs> oh, there's a poll! Who's got their tickets to Snow Way Out? Yeah! Yeah! It's on the 9th and 10th of December. Um, we're going to be live streaming for about 10 hours each day. Uh, but you thought this you, was bad. If you can't watch it live, <laughs> then you can watch it uh, for 30 days after yeah, the yeah. show happens at any time that you want. Maybe on Christmas Day when you should be with your family. <laughs> it's, it's one of those kind of things. Um, it's guaranteed to make you laugh. Ebers, yeah, there's some wonderful smells over there. What's happened? There's some good and there's some bad. Let's talk science. So. Adding a little bit of bicarb to your onions. Onions, I've done red onions, are purple. And we all know about natural indicators with pH and how it changes colour. Look what happens in the same cooking time with the same onions when you have bicarb. Really jammy, really soft, versus the other ones. Same time. It has broken down all the membranes of the onions. It's cooked them down in a fraction of a time. It has also turned them a really ugly colour. Right, that, that was a genuine wow <laughs> over <laughs> onions. <laughs> Everyone here went, oh wow. <laughs> Over I onions, that's, that's ridiculous. I didn't expect that big a difference. Because, you know, there are certain hacks, there's certain things that we do that might save you a minute, two minutes, something like that. We actually did a video yesterday that surprised me with some hacks as well. Oh, no, breaking cooking rules. Yes, we yeah, did that. and there are there are certain things that we do that have like minimal difference. That is a massive difference. Huge. The question is, do you want it? So I think if you're caramelising onions, it is always a long, slow process. You want to cook them right through. There is plenty of sugar in an onion anyway. An onion is an incredibly sweet thing, arguably sweeter than a lot of fruit, but you need to cook down that sugar and caramelize it and cook off all the other nasty stuff. That is much quicker. It's broken down the cell wall. It's enabled all the coloring to happen, the caramelization to happen. Uh, however, in doing so, it turns it a funny color. Now, had I put half the amount in or double the amount of onions, it might not be quite as ugly, but the fact is, it has definitely speeded up that cooking. And if that was going into a casserole or uh, a long stew or a curry, it probably doesn't matter what you've done is more than half the cooking time. Does it, can you taste it? Does it, is it, if you were to cook it, to get to the same thing, you just cook the other one for longer. 
But if you cook the oven for longer and have them side by side, would they taste any different? Yeah, and I think a lot of it is a mind over matter because they're grey and not particularly nice in colour. But bicarb will change the, the acidity and it will also has a slight... It, yes, it has a different flavour. Um, but it depends on where you're using it. If you're just using a caramelised red onion chutney on a cheese board, don't do that. Do that for longer and slower. If you're putting it into a curry and something else, or a stew, or a casserole, or a, a tagine, and you just want to get those onions soft quick, a small pinch of bicarb, I might have been a bit heavy handed there, but just to show you the difference and the speed, that is what that hack is doing in onions, changing the pH. So we have a look at meatballs. Can you taste the difference? Just I'd try it. Bring, bring them um, over, Baz. Bring them everyone's, over. everyone's calling them Halloween onions. They do look like Halloween onions. I also saw um, a couple of comments that uh, caught my eye. Number one, why is Pass It On only available in paid for events? It's not. It's not. We don't do them very often because we have to have a big lie down after we do them. So, <laughs> but we have got, what, two already in the bag? We've got one with us lot and then one with all chefs doing a Pass It On. Let's do a big announcement. Okay. At half past four. With a big, big announcement, announcement coming at, at four thirty. Big announcement. Big announcement. Okay. Uh, an exclusive. Oh, an exclusive announcement that what's I don't what? even know. No, but he, what's, what's well, that I don't one? know what Mike's planning. Oh, oh my yeah. day, that's yeah, I do a know thing. That, yeah, that is a big, oh, that's a big thing. Big announcement. Uh, and oh, the other comment that these um, are green. These are. Are they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, they look. They they from over here. I don't know if they deserve the wow we gave it. From a distance, I was like, that's impressive. But when you look closely, they're actually quite vile looking. Cheers. Oh, oh. A lot of the comments were saying they just don't like it full stop and it's never that nice. So I can't taste bicarb, but it does add a bit of a weird texture. A to, almost, it's a almost, because there's no cell membrane. Yeah. The they, taste so they, they, they look and taste a bit like snot. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not wrong, am I? No, they have a weird texture to them. But I think if, like oh, okay, yeah. Sheba said, if you put that into something, if you're, if you're, if that's the base of something, yeah. So you're then adding a load of flavours and it. things like that. I get it. I think that will be fine. I wouldn't put that in a burger. No. 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 Like a French onion soup. French onion yeah. soup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that could well. work. Um, another question I saw a couple of people asking. Barry. Hello. We're talking about, um, obviously, uh, the, what the bicarb does is to change the pH mm -hmm. of, um, uh, of things. What is pH? Pretty hot. Is it hot? No, what is it? It's, it's the pH level is the acidity level. In it. It's either al 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 what alkaline or... What does pH or stand for? I know this. I did... I got, I got a... B in chemistry. I cheated, but I've got a B in chemistry. <laughs> Ooh. Um, Tom, you're looking like you know. I don't. You're no. a doctor! Please say you know. Oh, come on, boys. It's basic. Oh, oh yeah, the, the comments understand. They get it. They get it. <laughs> no, they weren't asking me. me. They weren't asking me in the comments. Oh, okay. They were right. asking you. Okay. They already knew that you didn't know. Right. Where are we at next, Emma? <laughs> so, while you were tasting our green onions, um, I put both of our meatball mixtures into equal sized pans over roughly equal heat. It's quite difficult on these hobs, they're not exactly the same size. But we'll see the comparison of the two. And all we're doing here is just cooking it out like a bit of sauteed meat. What's interesting already is the difference in texture in the pan. And this will be difficult for you to see, we'll flip it out later on. One has already toughened up, as proteins do. The other one, that has the bicarb, is still much softer and more tender. Now, other applications of bicarb in meat mixtures is things like kebabs. So it will do it, keep it nice and soft and tender, but it will give you a nice crisp, like, crust as you grill it on a kebab. And that's what you'll find in a lot of um, kebab recipes, a little bit of bicarb. Some people put a little bit of bicarb in Italian dishes, like Italian meatballs, but also in their tomato sauce, just to offset the acidity of the tomatoes. You're just balancing it out. Once this is done, we'll have a little taste of each and do exactly the same. Now, 
Again, imagine this is step one of a dish where you add all sorts of deliciousness, whether it be a tomato ragu, you could finish this with a nice mustard cream sauce around it um, and serve it with mash. But just as a comparison, bicarb changing the pH. Uh, let's do the same plate. So this was the bicarb onions. This is the bicarb beef. No what? There's a lot of no bicarbers. Is there? Yeah. On a bicarb free diet. So single ketos. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm, not, I, I'm not sure how well this one's going down, mate. Well, it's not my pack. No, I know. It's not. It's not. Your, it's not. I know. We're putting them to the test. I know. This is, and this is why this is valuable consumer insights. Mm -hmm. well, how are they looking, Ebbers? You tell me. Your I'll turn. go. Your turn. So this one yeah. is with bicarb. Yeah. That one's not. Did it multiply? No, it's not about us. <laughs> you are such a pain. <laughs> I need to forget the video. No, no, I have not forgotten. This one's got bicarb. Bicarb. Put it. Let's be my spoon. You have bicarb. Right. Bicarb. I think it's browner. It's, br is it's it browner. Brown, it's browned more. It's funny looking, isn't it? Oh. Yeah. No bicarb. I'm not really sure what to expect here, but it's gonna. Oh, 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 oh! Big difference. So the Big difference. I just thought that's good mint. Well, no, I didn't. Know. I didn't actually. Oh, I mean that's that was a. The one with bicarb has a bounce. It's spongy. Yeah. 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 Tender. Tender. Has uh, basically, no. as those proteins have bound, what you've done is stop the squeezing out of all the moisture. So it's tender. It's bouncier. It's like the uh, meatball, the street food yes. meatball. No, I get it. The other side of the world. I, I was comparing. I was thinking. That is a very rubbery burger. Yes. When I first had it, I was thinking in a burger that wouldn't, that's too rubbery. Whereas the other fell apart. So that's a better experience for a, a, a burger or a bolognese sort of thing. To me, the bicarb one tasted synthetic because yeah. of that texture. You know, like all um, meat alternatives. Yeah. It had that it's kind got, of vibe it's, to it. So normals are comparing to a, like a baseline. What I'm thinking of is like, what is the experience you want? Do you want your proteins to do that and close up really tightly as overcooked meat, or do you want them to close up and keep the moisture in it? Because every other meat we cook, we do sous vide and we avoid overcooking mm. the proteins. Mm. Now you are comparing it to how you would normally have always cooked mixed mm. beef, which is better. And you might still have the same answer, but that's, that's the logic here. It's not causing the proteins to squeeze up and tighten. <coughs> Instead, it's allowing that moisture to stay inside and allowing more of a crisp edge. It feels like if I was making to these guys, but that, that's what it's doing. If I'm making meatballs, I get it. Yes. But I can't think where else I that would be useful for me in cooking with mince at home. Mm. It's kind of got a silkiness. Yeah, it to has. The outside, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, it's almost, yeah. It's just it's just really really moist, which I would say, which you should say is good for everything. But it's the balance that's throwing me a yeah. little bit. I know what you mean. Fascinating. You don't like fancy balls. It's not what I said, Evers. What's what so, I said? Who doesn't like a bouncy ball? Like, yeah. That is, they are so much fun. You can't, yeah, you can't go out of that, can you? Is it Jack Jones? What's the, 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 no, no, that's not the right one. Hello? The bouncy balls down the hill in San Francisco. No, oh, that was a Sony Bravia advert. Yeah, but who wrote the music? Jose Gonzalez. Oh, got that wrong. <laughs> and actually it was a cover of a song from the 80s. Classic. Which was uh, really good. The knife. Yes, the knife. One night to be confused. Well, Don't want to get demonetized though, so. <laughs> Copyright. <laughs> so, where are we? Are we, are we, are we on We to have banked the bicarb magic. Okay. And our half an hour has passed, so we're having a little look at our first one before we vote. So, we have tray bake versus spatchcock. But we're right back to the beginning now, so we're pausing this current game. Yeah. Taking a break, going right back to the beginning. We've got one tray cooked versus spatchcock chicken. And so they in half an hour, we cooked a whole chicken by spatchcocking it out. And you can see much more surface area, much more place for that wonderful, wonderful marinade and rub that we've put on it. And you've got all that lovely skin. Now you can cut it up, two legs, two wings, two breasts, the same as you would if you roasted it. Although it's easier to do in this stage because you're not cutting around 
uh, an extra spine. And you've got the one tray bake, which took just 15 minutes. Uh, the corn is nice and cooked and kind of the steam from the tomatoes as it evaporates. <laughs> you've got the beans and the rice. We finished it with feta, parsley and lime. Which do you think is worthy of your vote? Spatch cocking a chicken, by the way, the roast chicken is still going because it takes a little bit longer for those juices to run clear because it's all still bound up and it needed a whole oven because it was sitting proud out of the tray. So spatchcock chicken, which also, by the way, works really nicely on a grill or a barbecue, or midweek tray baits. So right, let, whilst we get a poll uh, going up and running, Ebers, can you explain, the, from your perspective, the pros and cons of each? <coughs> Versatility of a one tray bake basically means you can throw loads of stuff in midweek, pre weighed out, we use tins often, so it's one tin of this, one tin of that, one bag of that, really easy, uh, and you put it in and you leave it, you step back and you've got a one tray bake that I personally think looks great and would serve at the table like that and everyone can just dig in. So lots of versatility, super easy and convenient, uh, and you don't have to stand over a pot and watch it do its thing. I'm washing up. And, as Mike pointed out, you've already got one thing to wash up. This dish, for example, if I'd have done it differently, with the beans and the tomatoes and the rice, I still probably would have done it in one pot, but then I'd have had to grill or roast the corn, so you are kind of using that two, two different appliances. So it is a serious ease with one tray cooking um, that's hands-off, and the versatility is huge. Spatchcocking. I don't know if it looks... Uh, maybe on a board it does. I don't know if it looks as much of a centrepiece as a whole roast chicken that you might put in the centre of a table. However, I think you get more control in cooking. So generally it's more tender uh, and more moist. You don't overcook it. You've got more surface area, more skin. And if you're putting it on a grill, more opportunity for smoke and char as well. I would never cook a whole roast chicken on a barbecue, but I might cook a spatchcock chicken because you've opened it up and you've given yourself more options. Is there a downside? You've got to cut a backbone out. Not everyone's comfortable with that. You need scissors to do it. Um, and it's a bit gruesome if you're not used to butchering dead carcasses. However, that's the role of a chef. And as a home cook, whether you're doing it with bacon or sausages or anything, it's all much the same. It's meat. So the polls are open. Um, one question that's getting a lot of engagement is one I know, I know the answer to, but I have to ask you because it's going to wind you up. Um, Ebers, oven and gloves or... Tea towels when it comes to picking up both trays. Um, He's not using either at the moment. No, <laughs> no it's very hot. Um, personally, and as a chef, we hate oven gloves and mitts. Because once your hands are in them, they're stuck in them. And if something else changes, you need to do something with one hand or the other, you're always left short. I always have a tea towel to hand, and I can pick up anything hot, one-handed or two-handed. What I've got is flexibility then to drop that, and I've got a hand that hasn't got a mitt that makes me really clumsy, and I've still got control of this. For me, this. This is also much easier to wash up, launder, and iron, and people do. How often do people wash up their oven mitts? They are grubby as hell. So for me, a tea towel all the way. I disagree. I hate <laughs> Whenever I Do you use... launder your mitts? Yes. 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 Whenever I use a tea towel in the kitchen to pick up something hot, it's generally wet, and then I no, burn I myself anyway. So, <laughs> um, but whilst you're voting on that poll, uh, one of the questions that I've just seen coming through from a few people okay. is, ugh, ads in a live stream. Sorry, we didn't put them there. Thank you, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we will have a look and see if we can turn them off midstream because that's we did. Yeah, that's, that's sorry, that's silly, but sorry. It's not, not our fault. Not um, our fault. How is the poll looking? Nine hundred votes. Nine hundred votes. But I can't in. see what how, what how they look until I vote. Oh, I vote. So YouTube mobile, YouTube iPad, YouTube desktop, one tray cooks. Sixty-six percent. One tray cooks. And is that it? Congratulations. It does. Oh no, right. I love you that one. Huh? I'll move. And then right. oh, we need a backup. There we go. Back. You got it, you got it. I mean, the other thing with one tray cooks, of course. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Barry. Yeah. High, it's high, high tech. Excellent. Don't worry, we spent all the budget on the live show later on in the year. <laughs> <laughs> one thing that I would add, which I didn't do in my pros and cons, of course, which might have swayed the votes, spatchcock chicken. You've got to want to eat chicken. It's definitely for the meat eaters. Whereas this one tray bake I have here, could equally be vegetarian, it's got chorizo in it, but loads of our one tray bakes are vegetarian or vegan. <laughs> this one's got chorizo in it, a, but there is more versatility there. It's a really good point, you can't spatchcock a butternut squash, can you? You, can, you know what, I, I, I love this. You can try. hassle back one. You can hassle back, yeah. It's got the same amount of meat as the 
has the chicken. One piece. One piece. Hasn't it? Yeah. What? What? So the chorizo's existence yes. means it's got the same meat content yeah. as her object as the spatchcock chicken. Well, you probably can't hear Mike, but that's no one knows what he's talking about. So it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand what that means. There's a point there somewhere. We'll, we'll dissect that one later on. <laughs> um, right. Boys, would you like a chicken leg? Yes. 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 I'm keeping the breasts because we're going to do some of those later on. <laughs> you won't be able to eat them yet because they're really hot. But there you go. Lovely. Yeah. Later, and then are we going to move on to microwave mash? In half an hour, you can attack that when it's cool enough. Okay, you got to. We'll leave that there to cool down a little. Yeah, let's talk about microwave mash. Because I think, so as soon as we first mentioned microwave mash in the comments, people were like, microwave mash is the worst. And I saw a few people saying that. Um, so let's clarify exactly what it is that we're talking about here. Rather than peeling, boiling, yep. cutting at some point, sure. potatoes and then mashing them, could you take full on big potatoes, put them into a microwave, microwave them until they're cooked and then spoon out the potato from the inside to create mash which also if i'm not mistaken leaves you with potato skins and we all know how good potato skins never can be. waste a potato skin and they're, they're at their best once they've been microwaved exactly as well they're, they're ready to be like absorb as much fat as possible yeah crisp and and but that's not what we're here for no mash no, he's chickening at the he's moment. Chickening. The one tray bait was excellent, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah, microwave mash. Now, as a chef, we love microwaves. I think microwaves get a really bad rap because of a lot of things that are put in microwaves. Ultra-processed, ready meals, they're not great. But using a microwave for certain things, easy. The best mashed potato is a... Right, lots of different opinions on this. You can prep them and boil them. They take on quite a bit of water, but actually, once you put it through a rice sieve, you keep them big, chunky rinse and add loads of dairy, a delicious pom puree. Alternatively, you put them in the oven and you dry them out and you get a lovely crisp outside, a baked potato. Then you can use those crispy skins and you have this wonderful, fluffy, floury middle that hasn't absorbed all the water from the boiling pan, but it takes an hour, around 15, hour and 20 minutes to bake those potatoes. Microwave is going to cook the inside much the same, not exactly the same, in a fraction of the time. So one handful of potato, so a potato about that size, and my hands are quite small, um, I reckon in a microwave, eight minutes, and then check. Put in a, a table knife or a skewer just to see if it's soft all the way through. Before you put it in there, make sure you give it a good prick, because the skin is tight, and you don't want it to explode. So prick the skin with a fork, then put it in the microwave, about eight minutes, depending on the size of your potato and the wattage of your microwave. When it comes out, have a test, and you should be able to do it, but your skin won't be crispy. If you put in multiple potatoes, you don't need to multiply the time by that number of potatoes, but it will increase. So two potatoes might become 10 minutes, three or four minutes potatoes might become 12, 14 minutes. I put some on in the microwave 10 minutes ago, and in a couple of minutes, we'll have a look at them. Um, question from Adam G asking, what's the best type of potato for mashed potato? Oh. Good question. Here's what you're doing to it. Mashing. Mashing it. <laughs> well, boiling it, baking it, more well, microwaving it. Yeah. But something like a Maris Piper is ready. a good all-rounder. Evan's ready. Yeah, it's nearly ready. ready. Something like a Maris Piper is a good all-rounder. It will chip and roast and mash. Uh, or something like a King Edward is quite good as well. Um, can you put it back on for another two minutes? Yep. Um, so yeah, Maris Piper. If you're in Britain, it's a good all-rounder, uh, I think. Simple as that. Uh, so we've just had a poll um, because we know that there's lots of different ways of people uh, pronouncing microwave. Is it a microwave? Is it uh, a, a microwave? Microwave. Um, and so the poll says 69% of people said, oh well, we've spelled it the same. You spelled it the same. There's no. There's no 69% of people said. Either microwave or microwaving. Did we spell it the same both ways? Yeah. Fantastic. Did I ask Eliza to do that? Yes, I did. Fantastic. <laughs> Lovely bit of business. Well, Lovely. That was Lovely. a Nigella thing, right? Yeah, it was what, a Nigella thing. And 69 have ended up there as a percentage. Yeah. 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 It's quite a majority, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 It is. It is. Over two thirds. 
Mashed potato. How else can we do mashed potato? Uh, lots of dairy. I think that's the important thing. Is don't make mashed potato that isn't full of dairy. So uh, since the start of this broadcast, I've had a little pan here, which is butter and milk that has been nicely melted so that when you add dairy into mashed potato, you're adding hot into hot. I'll remove my dinner for now. I'll come back to that. Uh, question from Andy Mackey saying, do you put the potato in just the bowl or do you cover it in cling film? Good question. These ones are just on a plate as they are. You can cover them, but then they're going to steam and the skin's going to become really, really soft. So for me, you're still looking to kind of dry that potato out, just not as much as the dry, intense heat of an oven. Uh, whatever you do put it on will also become very, very hot. He's, he's such a politician. If you weren't a chef, you would have been a politician, <laughs> right? Because every time you get asked a question and you're thinking about the answer, you say, mm, good question, yeah. whilst I think of the answer. And then you go, <laughs> it's like a politician going, let me be clear. <laughs> what, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? <laughs> Um, We're in a live environment. You can't edit my thinking process and my, the cogs turning round. So I'm buying time. Evers, uh, uh, talking about buying time, we're two minutes late to our announcement that we announced that we were going to announce. Oh, are we? Um, do we, we, do we, we have no time idea. to announce it now or would you like rather us wait and push the announcement back? How do you check if potato's done? Stick a knife in it. Does it glide right in? More importantly, does it fall right off? Because if it falls off, then you've basically cooked it all the way through. Whereas if it's still stuck on the knife, and I, these are all cooked, so I'm not going to demo it, uh, it will stick to the starches. But basically, that's not going to stick to a starchy potato because it's cooked all the way through. So I'm going to halve them, scoop out the flesh. I'll leave you with uh, one, two, three, four, uh, the outside skins and four, and you can talk about an announcement. Okay, right. So just context behind this announcement is this announcement was not planned no. at all. So it is not that Dolly Parton is taking part in Snow Way Out, unfortunately. <laughs> that was one of the suggestions. Uh, but let's put this way. Mike and the uh, production team have been working on this said announcement for... Two months? Two months. It was an idea that Mike had, and we all said, you're crazy. Yeah. That's not possible. We you are not going do to be doing you that. You can't do that. Um, and only when Mike, about, well, 20 minutes ago, went, announce it! Do I know that it's actually happening? Well, it means that he's got the <laughs> confidence that we can announce it, and we're not it's able to happen. take it back. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool, cool. We can, do you want to come? Mike, you come and announce Come in, yeah, you yeah, come yeah, and announce yeah, 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 go, go on. Hi, everyone. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I've got a hernia. <laughs> um, we all know that December, Christmas time, the time of Advent, and we all have our lovely Advent calendars. And what's really exciting is getting up in the morning, opening that window and seeing what's behind it. Could it be chocolate? Could it be beer? Could it be coffee? Could it be a lovely little picture of a donkey and baby Jesus? We thought <laughs> we would do the same for you with a video per day on the Sorted channel to say thank you for supporting us. Uh, every single day up until Christmas Day, we will be releasing a video. And they're not just any old video. No. This isn't, this isn't like Vlogmas. They are bangers. <laughs> every single <laughs> one not. of them are bangers. We've yeah, got pretentious ingredients. Yeah. We've got... Collabs, yeah, we've got, we, we culminate, and I don't want to spoil it, but I'm going to, uh, with our Christmas Eve video, which is an all chef pass it on. Oh my goodness. We have not... gadgets. We have gadgets from other countries. We have uh, pretentious ingredients. We have Singaporean street food. We've got, we've got everything that you can possibly imagine. Um, so make sure that you click the little bell and uh, remember to come back every single day to the channel from the 1st of December at 5 p.m. UK time, and you'll get a lovely little bit of sorted nonsense to brighten Marvelous. the day. Yes! It's happening! And it's all free. <laughs> but buy our stuff, it's all 50% off. <laughs> <laughs> but what are you doing now? Well, this whole microwave mash thing's a bit of a doddle, isn't it? Because 14 minutes ago, I put four potatoes into the microwave, and now they're cooked. If I was doing that by boiling, probably wouldn't be as quick. Uh, if I'm honest, by the time you brought the water up to a boil, you've had to peel them, you've had to dice them, you've put them in, and then you've drained them. Might be close, depending on how small you cut your potatoes, but the smaller you cut potatoes, the more water they take on, uh, and the more waterlogged and wet your mash is. Whereas this is lovely dry potato inside. And, you're right, skins rather than going in the rubbish because you've just peeled them and thrown your peel away you've now got eight 
potato skins that on another occasion, maybe tomorrow night when they're dried out, you could douse in oil, uh, cheese, spring onions, spices, uh, and lots of lovely things and put them through the oven. I think we're fine, we've got 24 minutes before this live stream is scheduled to finish. Sounds like enough time to make some potatoes. You haven't eaten your, you haven't eaten your chicken yet. Right, can I ask a skin related question? Yes. Um, <laughs> can you have a look at this rash? Yeah. Um, I've seen people on, on TikTok cutting their skin on the potato before microwaving it, and then the two ends of the, well, the two skins on the potato then come off. Oh, like an avocado like or a mango? A, like a, no, not neither no, of them. No. No, like nothing like that. Right. So when they, 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 they like a, make a cut around the edge of the potato, so when they, they microwave it and then it cools down, the uh, potato contracts and the skin just kind of pulls off either side. Or is that only through boiling? No, the chef has left the kitchen. <laughs> so there is no answer. <laughs> That's so right. Gonna... Maybe. <laughs> maybe. But there are lots of other people that you can ask who are watching oh, yeah, this video right now. Uh, what well, well done. Um, can you tell me what's that about? I've seen it on TikTok, I don't really understand it. Please comment down below. Also, Baz, have you got something on your jumper? Uh, no, only so, only something really gorgeous. What that is, is that? that? I think is a percentage off. Is it really? It, Where did you get that? I forgot. Uh, I got it from Eliza. She Eliza gave it to Eliza me. gave it to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We do have our biggest sale ever on uh, on the store. Every product has a discount on it. Go and check it out. We've got t-shirts, there's jumpers, there's hats, uh, there's courses that you can do, digital courses that you can do. Uh, one from Ebbers, one from Barry, one from Mike. Maybe I'll get to do one next year. <laughs> we just gotta find what I can teach people about first. How to drink beer. <laughs> Ebbers, you're using your uh, scraper. Yeah, for no one else wants it, so I'm going to use it. <laughs> the bench scraper didn't win, but what we have is mashed potato, done in about 15 minutes, 16 minutes by the time you've peeled and scooped them out. And it is a microwave mash. It's got a lot of dairy, it's got a lot of butter in it, it's seasoned with salt. Otherwise, it gets you a very simple way there in a fraction of time compared to boiling or oven baking and you end up with the skins, which we will use tomorrow. I'll add that to our Stats Hot Chicken. In the comments, there's a skin on club. People are saying, leave the skin on and mash it. Like, it's, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, quite, it's extra um, fibre. Yeah. And yeah. flavour. Texture. Really, I mean, it's yeah. That nuttiness you get from a potato. Arguably the terroir of a potato is on its skin. However, for me, yes, if they're new potatoes. Crush mm. new potatoes with skin. Mm. Less so if they're the older, more leathery. Those skins are better baked off, crisped up, and used as a vessel for fat, like cheese and bacon. Garstick says eggs in mash, yay or nay? Ooh, eggs in mash. Egg, what to enrich the mashed potato? Put some egg yolks, I guess. There I mean, is a wonderful dish in France called Duchess Potatoes, and that is mashed potato that's finished with egg yolk. As you then pipe it, and then you rebake it so you get a nice crisp outside. So you get lots of like rosettes and the egg yolk is a wonderful thing to enrich it um, and take it through. Lots of French potato dishes are like that. Um, it's probably in the repertoire de cuisine in one of the many potato dishes the French love. <laughs> I, I'd have to say, I love the thought of, you know when you do a live broadcast, sometimes it hits onto the youtube.com forward slash live page. Somebody clicking on this and looking straight into the comments and just seeing hundreds of comments going, skin on, skin on, skin off, <laughs> skin off, skin off, skin off. Skin and that's why off. we love this community. They are engaged about the things that matter. But we now have a vote. Is it bicarb to change the pH? of your cooking, whether that is meatball mixtures or, or minced ground beef mixtures or onions, or is it microwaves to hack your potato? Bear in mind, microwaves are also great for steaming veg and all sorts of other things, but we're talking about microwave mash. Microwave mash or pH from bicarb in cooking. The poll is now up, please vote now. Um, so let's just recap over the, uh, what we have so far. Originally we had one tray cooks versus spatch cock chicken. You chose one tray cooks. Then we had scissoring versus bench scrapers. And, and not you chose, teams. You, cho <laughs> you, you chose to use scissors for more reasons in the kitchen. And now we, we have bicarb magic versus the microwave mashers. You've... <laughs> 
teams. He's good. He's on netball good. teams, these, aren't he? He could be netball teams, yeah. 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 <laughs> any sports. Any, any sport. sports. Any sports. Basketball, I thought, for the bicarb magics. Yeah, yeah. yeah that sounded about right. Um, but yeah, we need your votes. What we're going to do after this, we will go through hand mixing chicken and ice cube tray flavour bombs. All of those together will get put into a final poll so that we can decide together with you this global community around the world filled with thousands of people voting there's 4,000 people watching this now and the world's greatest cooking hack and and so many votes coming in this but is incredible so many votes but you can't see them no I can't, I can't see unless I, unless I vote I won't know what they're voting for oh interesting mm, so, like, yeah. I like that uh, people, people are still going crazy over the bicarb stuff they, people don't understand it Saying it, it, it seems they are in the most ugliest onions I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Yet the job it's doing is really, really flipping smart. Eliza, close the poll. Close it. <laughs> Have we got sound effects? <laughs> Where are we at? Can we, can we, can we, um, a delivery with dramatic effect. Bicarb magic, twenty-five percent. <gasps> the microwave magic, seventy-four percent. Yeah! Microwave magic, seventy-four percent. Straight through. Right. That's ninety-nine percent. <laughs> what? Correct, I it's hard, isn't it? See? I got it. Now Nailed it's it. Right. 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 Game on. We are into the final round. Hand mixing chicken. I can't wait for Ebers to explain that one. <laughs> <laughs> and ice cube tray flavour bombs. Um, and our roast chicken has also just come out of the oven. And what I was saying for earlier about the less surface area, because you haven't got it, all this skin on the bottom has steamed rather than gone crispy. So that was why spatchcock could have been the answer. You didn't want it. We went to one tray cook, so it doesn't really matter. Although in this one tray, I also have cabbage, beetroot, onion, and turnip uh, with the chicken and the mash. It's kind of one tray cook anyway. Uh, think of the oysters, That's the beauty no, it's of a that. chicken, mate. <clears throat> think of the benefits. <laughs> That's the biggest benefit of cooking a chicken it is. the normal way. Yeah, you get the beautiful bits oysters. underneath. Yeah. Um, CEW, the pole alternatives aren't really comparable to each other. I know. And that <laughs> is on purpose. These are all of the suggestions that we yeah. had from you, the community, for things that we should put. And we just put them up against each other because we have to try and find a way of working out what is the internet's greatest cooking hack. So no, scissors and bench scrapers aren't comparable, but... It's just a bit of fun, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so our last one, our last one. We got ourselves 15 minutes to blitz through this last one and we're doing ice cube flavour bombs first. So ice cube trays as a way of saving ingredients for a later date that are flavour bombs to help your cooking. So midweek cooking, you're doing something, I just, it just needs something else and you can throw that flavour bomb in it. So one flavour bomb that I'll demonstrate for you, but you can do this with all herbs. I'm gonna do bay leaves. Massive flavour bomb, and basically, no ever cook without them, but if you don't have fresh bay leaves, you can do this with any fresh herbs. You can do this with uh, ginger, with garlic. Basically, you want to make a puree out of a flavour you later want to add into your cooking. So imagine this, I'm cooking at home, and I haven't got access to the bay tree. So instead... <laughs> I'm cooking lentils, I'm cooking stews, casseroles, stocks, and I want that bay flavour, which we have recently proven is so much better oh, and an absolute oh. success. Then this is how you get it. So basically, a little bit of salt, a little bit of oil, a little bit of water, and you blend it up. Now, bay leaves aren't going to blend as well as most herbs, <laughs> but we should get something that's really flavourful. And normally with a bay leaf, you would cook it, infuse it, and then you take it out afterwards. This way, you don't even need to. So you get super bay. Um, this is bay on bay. Very loudly. Like a struggle. I think you get the idea. Yeah. I'm blending bay leaves. Uh, Jay, do you mind? We're trying to we're trying to do a live stream. What are you reading? Well, it's just that I can tell that Ben's breaking lots of different rules in the kitchen. He's so naughty, isn't he? I know, he? really naughty. And I just thought, what if there was a book that was on offer at the moment for just, I don't know, £10, which showed you how to break lots of different well, rules that would be in the kitchen? That would be ridiculous, Jay, because that 
book would must be a, a, double the price of that. You would have thought that the value that it provides you would be worth its weight in gold. But no, Barry, you could get it for just £10 in Sorted Foods Black Friday sale. So what, if you like hacks like this, they yes. can also be found in a book like that. I tell you what, Barry, would you like to cook some dishes without using a knife to I chop things up? I think I have already. Would you like to pig out on vegan food? Oh, give it to me, baby. Then this could be... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I went too far. I went too far. Sorry. Yeah, book, book's half price. Buy it. Ten quid. It's great. <laughs> Evers. <laughs> so basically, I blend it up and I put it into the ice cube tray. Um, then you can place a lid on it or cover it, place it into the freezer. And once they're frozen, you have these incredible flavour bombs. Now, bay leaf is a good example because it's not something that everyone always has fresh available. Other examples, ginger. So I had some ginger left the other day and I just froze them down. It's exactly the same thing. I blend it up with a little bit of oil, a little bit of water, and now you can either let them defrost or you can just throw those straight into mixtures like curries or stir fries and you get that fresh ginger flavour uh, you can buy frozen ginger and put it in your freezer, but this is a way of making use of leftovers and it's much cheaper if you freeze them down. Another suggestion from you guys was coffee. If you ever do filter coffee and you've got like a third of a jug left at the bottom and you don't want it, freeze it down into ice cubes and you can place those ice cubes into your iced coffee rather than ice so it doesn't dilute them. And these are three more that I did a couple of days ago. We had some curry leaves left over. Now curry leaves are an incredible ingredient when you're cooking dishes. But if you don't always have them to hand, I literally took curry leaves and did exactly the same thing that I did with the bay leaves. Throw one or two of those into a, uh, a bowl of dal and that, or a saucepan of dal so they melt, uh, that is an absolutely <laughs> delicious addition. This one is a couple of lemons that we had kicking around from filming. I zested the lemons, then I squeezed the lemons and these are really, really wonderful zesty, very frozen. I'll give it a minute. Ah, there we go. These silicone ones are quite good because you can just bend them. Basically, lemon zest and lemon juice combined. So that can go into any kind of dressing when it's dissolved. It can go into things like a gin and tonic as a ice cube. And the last one I did was garlic. So you can do any kind of flavour one. My thinking is don't bother doing things like harissa because it keeps in the cupboard anyway. Only do things that are fresh that might go off. So it's a way of basically looking after leftovers upscaling food so you don't throw it away and giving yourself these wonderful hacks of flavour to add into all sorts of cooking midweek as flavour bombs. That's the ice cube hack. What do we think? Getting a lot of love. Winter Miss um, says, yeah, ginger and garlic cubes all the time. Always, you never you need a whole bulb of garlic. So, yeah. yeah, it's great. There's a few people here saying they've frozen their eggs. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Well, for scrambled eggs? Yeah, I think so. uh, oh, scramble them later. No, no, no. no. Uh, <laughs> egg whites freeze really well. So, for example, if you're separating out eggs and you only want the egg yolks for a custard or a um, creme anglaise or to glaze the top of buns or something, then the egg whites do freeze really well and you can still whip them up into meringues or something no, later down. No. Put them in a sandwich bag, just your egg whites, and zip lock it, put it in. Next time you crack some eggs, you've got some egg whites left over, add them in. You just keep adding until you've got enough, defrost the whole lot, whip them up, and you've got an option. Oh, sorry, that does confuse me, because like, water isn't egg's worst enemy when it comes to whipping up egg whites. When you're freezing things, if you're not careful, they get like that frost bite on them. Would that not ruin the, idea, the opportunity to whip, whip them up? Just, just whacking them on your freezer tray. So it doesn't, doesn't work in a freezer, it has to be airtight. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Lots of people also talk about um, freezing espresso for coffees and iced coffees and that kind of thing. I'm Ooh. wondering if you could make uh, an espresso martini on the rocks. But, but, the, but the martini but the is, the but the martini is the rock. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Think about that. Not the martini bit, but the espresso <laughs> yeah, is, yeah. is on the rock. Oh. Would you like the sound of that? Oh. Yeah. 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 Yummy, yummy, yummy. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up. Uh, Matt Robertson <laughs> says glazing. <laughs> nope, can't read that one out. <laughs> 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 Uh, I keep a bay plant on my window. The bay, bay is getting a lot of love here. Lots of bay leafers out there, definitely. Definitely lots of bay leafers. Uh, so much so that we've put them on a t-shirt, actually. And yeah, yeah. yeah, we have. Yeah, so if, if, if only they were... No, we'll stop. No, no. Fine. <laughs> uh, frozen lime wedges. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Uh, lavender cubes for the... 
For food or for the bath? <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> That's a good flavour. Tell you what, seventy-one percent of people are now bay leafers. Wow. I wonder if our video influenced that. Uh, probably so. It, it, it In our be. audience, probably. Whether yeah, I, I, yeah, if yeah. only that seventy-one percent was a global appreciation for that <laughs> particular leaf of the laurel. Sorry, freezing pancake batter. Does that work? Don't know. Oh, is it? Eliza's seen it on TikTok. It's got to be true. <laughs> Boys, can I hand mix with chicken? Yeah. What, no, explain, no, it explain sounds so this wrong. One. So this was one that uh, caught the attention of some of the team here. I'm confused by it. I, I have also seen it. I, I'm still confused by it. But in theory, you've got chicken breast. And now what you want is shredded chicken. So luckily we spatched cock a couple of chickens and that you can see how juicy these are. These are lovely, lovely, lovely juicy breasts. And all I'm going to do, with or without skin, maybe without skin for shredding. Yeah. yeah. But that's got, they're crispy in flavour, so we'll come back to that. Freeze them and put them in the ice cream chest. Yeah, and then an espresso martini. <laughs> and then the logic is that rather than having to shred this with two forks or your fingers, I can't wait for this. A hand mixer. <laughs> no, no, but ever, ever, ever. Just, just make, make sure we get this for social because it does the same this, job. This needs to live internet forever. So I know you're taking the Mickey, but this is a Josh Weissman tip, and I hear that he's quite popular on on YouTube. Oh, I never thought I'd see the day where I could film Evers. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, I don't know why you'd want to do this to really lovely juicy proteins like chicken. I imagine maybe pork pork better, but everyone said it's the chicken we should do. I'm embarrassed by this. But I am here as a puppet and I'm having my strings pulled by you so we can find the internet's and the world's greatest hacks. Please don't let it be this one. Can I point out, Evers? It's only bloody working. It's working really well. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting into it. He's I loving it. It's fair as charms. So yeah, straight away. So chicken sandwiches down the cart, oh, isn't it? Yeah. I'm being honest. We haven't got the alternative. I feel like we probably could have shredded it by hand. Probably not massacred it quite like this, but we could have shredded it okay. I mean, now imagine that kind of soft, juicy chicken. It looks like it's already been chewed once. Can go oh, into oh, oh, our chia batter. Politician. You know what it needs? <laughs> you know what it needs? It needs some scissor and garlic chopped chive Ooh. mayo. <laughs> It needs some fresh rocket. It needs some slices of tomato. And what we have ourselves is a sandwich. Was it any quicker or better than doing it by hand? De definitely quicker. And definitely quicker. Is it a factor of how much you're doing? Bad because bad. if you're doing shredded chicken for a party of 20 and you've got 10 chicken breasts, a stand mixer or that is going to be quicker. If you're doing a couple for a couple of sandwiches, has it given you the best result? It might be quicker. There's more to wash up. Is it better? I've been in the comments. No. Mm, he was talking about the ch chicken beer ma and a mass. What, what, what are you... Whoa. 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 Hello. Hello, Jamie. Sorry, said it that bit out. <laughs> Barry, I've been in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jamie. He was talking about the chicken beer and a massacre. It's a nay in a lot of the comments. Oh, it's a nay. They're saying no. it looks like tuna. It does look a bit like tuna. But it might novelty, the fun of that, have a you tuna sandwich. <laughs> it's chicken. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, you chicken of the sea. Chicken of the sea. <laughs> oh, my, my fear with it is... Tuna of the land. <laughs> genuinely, the, the, as, as the whisks go round, they, they kind of chew it up, which gives you this very odd texture. If it's for a sandwich filling or something where you want it really fine, maybe. I think that might work quite nicely with big chunks of pulled pork, where you kind of, it's already really succulent and juicy. If your chicken is cooked well, and is really succulent, I don't think it needs it. If this chicken was overcooked and dry, it would have shredded probably better. But, I'm not convinced by this one. It's over to you guys. Is it the- Can you show, the show? Yeah, let's have a proper look. Like right over from the camera. Yeah, 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 let's have a look. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Is it? Can we see close up, please? Get closer! Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Dom, closer! We're trying, we're trying to give it his best chance here. 
Well, well so the closer you get, the worse of a chance you're giving it. I'll be honest. It doesn't matter. I just want to say it properly. It's right. Is it hand mixer shredded chicken or ice cube tray flavour bomb? The vote is yours. Over to you. So the poll is going to go live now. If it goes like the comment section, it's, it's going to be a, it's gonna be ugly. a chicken of the landslide. <laughs> Well done. Thank you. No, I no, did it wrong. No, no. Did it wrong Apparently, that's a Jessica Simpson reference. Is it really? Yep. Go on, niche. Jessica Tight. Simpson, very niche. More niche, Ashley Simpson, her sister. Yes. She had yes. some really yeah. good songs. Do I want them one? Um, Needless to say, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll just segue away from that. <laughs> Needless to say, we only picked eight very popular, and several of you were multiple people were talking about ice cube trays, or multiple of you were talking about bench scrapers or scissors. Um, so we picked the very popular ones. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of other hacks. Um, so this is by no means the only ones, but I'm hoping we're close to having our final poll and we have four minutes to wrap up our final shout. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness, they're, 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 the, poll is, the poll is aggressive. Is it aggressive? <laughs> it's an aggressive poll. <laughs> it's an aggressive yeah. poll. Yeah. Is this the most... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've had over a thousand votes already. I think it's more people voting on this than anything <laughs> else. You vote about the things you care about. Yeah. Is it because they're angry? They're angry. They're, they're angry. angry. Yeah, I love an um, angry vote. You know what? Let's close the poll. Let's There's close no the poll. Point. It's not going to change, is it? Eliza, announce the poll results. 83% ice cube tray. Ice cube tray! Yay! Right! Oh, he oh, spoils it every <laughs> single time he finds a way to spoil it. Now, right. when we got to this stage and we were planning this and how this was going to go, we thought there are two options. Number one, if we've not mucked around and we've done this in an efficient manner, we will have time to put these two against each other, these two against each other, and then have a finalist. We've mucked around and had a great time, and hopefully you, <laughs> you have, have too. too. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to provide you with one final poll. This is going to be the one that decides the greatest cooking hack in the world. But before we do that, has your favourite made it this far? Ooh. Are you still in for the sweepstakes? Are you still in? I forgot what I said. <laughs> you didn't say anything, you thought it. Yeah, I know, I forgot what I thought. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I lost, I'm out of sweepstakes already. So, as we come into the final poll, what is the world's greatest cooking hack? Is it One Tray Cooks? Yeah. Is it scissors? Yeah. Is it microwave Ooh. mash? Yeah. Or is it ice cube tray Ooh. flavor bombs? Oh. That, that <laughs> poll will be going live any second now, which gives us a perfect time, Barry, to talk about what apps have you downloaded on your phone? Oh, no. yeah, stop it. <laughs> we have done so many plugs because we, there's a lot of stuff going on at the moment. Psychic, massive Black Friday deal. Go check it out. All the merchandise that we have, it's all been reduced as well as can't be asked with the rules as well. Only 10 quid. Go check it out. Sortedfood.com. Plugs are done. We're plugs done are done. With the plugs. We're not doing any more plugs until I do one more later. Oh, no. But also, we've had the announcement that we're going to be doing a video a day. Yeah, surprise. On the build up to Christmas surprise. throughout December. And if that doesn't happen, you know it's because Mike lost the confidence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, recap one tray cooks. So versatile. It saves you so much time. It saves so much washing up. Again, as a hack, it's probably the one that I personally use the most at home, but is it the best? I don't know. Is it going to be scissors? Using scissors in the kitchen for things that you wouldn't generally think of, such as cutting herbs, cutting the ends off green beans, cutting a pizza, if Bernard remembered to take it out of the oven in time. <laughs> or is it microwave mash? Cooking your, mash, your potatoes in the microwave and then mashing it gets a lovely, fluffy, beautiful mashed potato every single time. Or is it the final hack that we put to the test today, the ice cube tray flavour bombs, where you freeze some of your favourite flavours so that you can use them at a later point. Not only are you being money efficient, you're being time efficient and you're being flavourful. Boys, so. I'm just scissoring your pizza and you know what? It's quite easy. We are, there are some amazing, like, there's an actual scissor gadget out there for cutting specifically pizzas, and it's ridiculous. Offset, it's like an offset spatula, yeah, but for it's, scissors. 
Very pointless. No point reviewing it. It's rubbish. But well, they, by the way, way, we have a pizza that I loaded with all of our leftover mushrooms and ham from yesterday. So we'll okay, tuck into right. that as well. Votes are coming in thick and fast. How many votes have so far? Well, over, over 1,200 votes. Please Barry, vote now. Barry, Barry. Barry didn't get the hint that we were coming into the kitchen for the final results of the poll. I'll, I'll go now. It's literally the only <laughs> energy that was in the room and you still missed it. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us uh, for this Hack Friday. We've had a real laugh. Last year... Oh, mind that being... Last year we did Hack Friday and we did eight hours of putting hacks to the test and it was absolutely brilliant. This has been much shorter probably more chaotic for you mm -hmm. in a way uh, but still great fun i can't wait to see what we do next year next year oh can we worry about th this result first <laughs> <laughs> shall i end the poll please do do. It, do it do it do it is it tray bakes scissors in the kitchen ice cube tray flavor bombs or microwave mash i Yay. can reveal in fourth place oh. with 11 percent of the vote microwave mash Ooh. I mean it's good it's good it's good in third place with 16% of the vote scissors yes good choice good cho not as good as the bench scraper in second place oh that's really oh, helpful nice good. And yeah, <laughs> in second place with 27% of the vote oh Flavor bomb ice cube trays, which means oh, taking yeah. the first place, the internet's greatest cook, one with 43% of the votes. One tray cooks. Put it in. Put it's it the in. way put it forward. In. Crown, in. It. Crown oh. it. Crown it. <laughs> Take it out. Take it out. <laughs> well, I think, I think we've come up with a worthy winner there. That is delicious. So versatile, so many hacks, love it. Just one example. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for mm. joining us. Enjoy the rest of your Black Friday where you're going to be advertised to by so many different people <laughs> plugging their Who own products. Unfortunately, you've had an hour and a half <laughs> without any of that. No plugs. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we look forward to seeing you for a video a day in oh, December. Really? We look forward to seeing you at Snow Way Out on the 9th and 10th of December, where I don't know where you can get tickets, mate. Still you know. <laughs> so and me. don't forget <laughs> all of the Black Friday offers that are on the Sorted Food store for the merch and for Psychic, where you get 50% off. Have a fantastic... I've got to go and end the stream. Friday. <laughs> I can do it here. He has control. We're Not done. End here. Over